first Sunday in Lent. For those of y'all worshiping today with us, it is Communion Sunday. Um, if you're worshiping from home, please gather the elements now. For those of you worshiping in person today, you should have received a pre-packaged uh, element. If you haven't, please let us know. We can make sure you get one. Please wait until I open mine to open yours, and we will take the bread and the cup together. For those of you worshiping in person, I have to remind you all of this. Uh, please wear your mask properly, uh, speak responsibly, um, and come along with hymns. For those who are worshiping online, where most of the hymns are United Methodist Hymnal or the Faith We Sing. If you would like to receive a service folder, please contact us, or you can go to um, our website. Our website, which is Audit Hill United Methodist Church or Audit Hill UMC .com. So, and you can uh, see the service folder there also. And last but not least, uh, next Sunday, uh, please move the clock forward. It's spring forward. Hard to believe it's already that time, but um, please move your clocks forward. And while mass physical distance and hand cleansing are required on church grounds, we cannot promise that you would not be infected by coronavirus 19 as it is a highly infectious disease. With that, please let us turn our focus now to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Lift up your hearts.
scripture reading this morning is taken from Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generations to those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your sons, or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigners residing in your tongues. On the sixth day the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your mother and father, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbors, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belonged to your neighbor. Please join me as we read Psalm 19 and Tiffany to the choir master, a Psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaim his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. The voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and like a strong man, runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heaven, and its circuit to the ends of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commands of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also the honey and goodness of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servants warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his arrows? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my God and my Our second reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 through 25. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power 
of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the word through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling rock to Jews, and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Hymn number 301.
Our gospel reading this morning is taken from John chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both the sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overthrew their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will rise it again in three days. They replied, It had been 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it up in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of the Lord. A very interesting encounter as we are, in a sense, along with Jesus moving towards Easter slash Passover. The scripture said, and it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And if you remember last week, Jesus spoke openly that he had to go to Jerusalem, and he had to be betrayed by the chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law. And that he would suffer and he would die and that he would rise again after three days. And here we see he has journeyed now to Jerusalem. And a very interesting thing he did, he took some cords and made a whip and drove out, as we know from scripture, the people who he found selling cattle, sheep, dogs, and exchanging money. It was Passover, and it was big business. Every Jew had to come to the temple court to perform the rituals for Passover. And some of them came from foreign countries, so the money exchangers were there. And some of them came from far away and could not bring their own goat or cattle or bull or whatever. And so it was lucrative business. And Jesus drove them out. But that's not the sermon for today. The sermon is on the second part. The Jews ask him, by what authority? What sign? Picking up in verse 18, it says, The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? We read in 1 Corinthians, that the Jews demand what? Signs. They want to know what sign. Prove to us that you have this authority. And there are people today who want specific signs to prove the Christian faith. Show us some miracle, some sign, something to prove that Jesus is the Christ, the Lord, the one that deserves all devotion. But listen to Jesus' answer. Destroy this temple, and I will raise it up again in three days. And as usual, the Jews got it wrong. And as usual, we also get it wrong. As a matter of fact, as we read the scripture, uh, they reply, It has taken 46 years to build this temple. And you're going to raise it up again in three days? It's in what? Impossible. And that's the point, isn't it? That God is in the business of doing the what? 
the impossible. Today we happen to read some very interesting scripture. From my point, nothing is more important than the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. Sometimes as we read the Word of God, especially the Ten Commandments, we are, as Christians today, say we live under grace and we should pay little or no attention to the Ten Commandments. I think that's part of the problems that we have today is that as a country and as a nation, as a people, as a church, we don't fall under anything. And we are really not following God and His laws. I especially want, like what was written by David in Psalm 19. Verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is what? It's perfect. Reviving the soul. He goes on, the testimonies of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. But unfortunately, we think we know better than God. Far too often, we as human beings think we know better and can do better than God. And that's what Paul writes about in 1 Corinthians. He makes it quite clear, picking up in verse 18, it says, For the message of the cross is what? Foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is God's way foolishness or is it really what saves us? As Christians, we believe that Jesus not only lived, that he died on the cross, but most importantly, God performed the impossible and raised up the temple, what? After three days. His disciples only remembered after the fact that he mentioned this. Are we like the Jews demanding signs? We want proof that Jesus actually lived and died and is resurrected? Or are we like the Greeks? We know better. We have science. We have technology. We have the answer. And a man can do so much today. And we think that we don't need God anymore. I mean, we can split the atom. We can do all these miraculous things. We drive in cars and, you know, it's getting to, I don't know about you, but I remember as a kid when technology was not that great. I'm originally from Belize. No phone. And then when you had a phone, it was a party line and, you know, the individual phones. Today, we walk around with a phone that's also a computer, and I can see and hear my brothers who are in Belize and talk to them. In our wisdom sometimes, and our technology, we forget that God is still what? God, and He is still in charge. And so, listen to what the scripture says, picking up at verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? And I can tell you a lot of philosophers have said a lot of crazy things concerning God. That God is dead. That there is no God. That we as human beings are the most intelligent thing in the universe. They go on and on and make these claims. But here is what we believe. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know Him. The truth is, we cannot know God by our intellect alone. We cannot get in relationship with God by mere intellect. It is a faith perspective. We have to what? Believe. As a matter of fact, Paul continues and points out 
For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. And today, that is exactly what we are still doing. We are preaching the word of God. And for those who believe, God used that to bring about salvation. And so today, as Christians, as we are journeying through the season of Lent, as we are looking forward, as Jesus was looking forward to the Passover, going up to Jerusalem, where we will suffer many things. Some people will say, oh, what you believe, as a matter of fact, if you haven't heard it yet, some intellectual people think that as Christians, that we're stupid. That we believe in this old time religion and this faith and, and we believe in the law, the Ten Commandments, and we believe God's word. And there are people who are trying to twist and turn the word of God into something that it is not. But to us who believe, it's the wisdom of God. For we preach Christ crucified. There are people who don't believe that Christ died and resurrected. And they claim to be Christian. But we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to the Jews. And foolishness to Gentiles. That's what we are preaching here. Jesus Christ went to Jerusalem. He suffered those things. He was dead. He was buried. But more importantly, he was what? Resurrected. And so as we move through Lent, that is what we're moving towards to celebrate Easter. The scripture ends with, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks. Listen to these words. Christ. Jesus Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And so today as Christians, we believe that Jesus is the what? The power and the wisdom of God. And that God's word from the Ten Commandments and his entire word is still relevant today. The word of the Lord. Oh 
Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. Is what the Lord has done in me. Please join me as we affirm our faith. There is one God the Father. All things come from Him, and we belong to Him. And there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. All things exist through Him, and we live through Him. Amen. This week, the Church prays for the Church in Ireland and the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom consists of England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. As it is the season of Lent, we will have prayer. We will then have a moment of silent prayer, unison prayer and confession, and then we'll sing the Kyrie. We won't do the Lord's Prayer afterwards as we normally do it. We'll do the Lord's Prayer during communion. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your words this morning. And even though at times we do not fully understand your ways, we are a people of faith. And by faith we believe. And it is the power of God. It is the wisdom of God. Father, we cannot prove many things. We are not intelligent enough. And in reality, as the wisest man and all the great knowledge that we have accumulated is nothing compared to you. May we as humanity humbly bow and worship you, the God who spoke into existence all things. May we be a people of faith and not one that demands signs and miracles. Not one that demand explanation but truly just follow you in faith. Lord, during these days we as a church continue to pray for our church. Lord, we pray that you be with the church as we strive to preach the gospel of Christ. And at times we encounter problems and people may ridicule us. But may we continue in faith preaching the gospel of Christ. Father, we pray also for the church in Ireland and the United Kingdom. We ask that you bless them as they reach and preach the word of God. Father, we pray for the sick, for those who are faced with cancer or any other form of illness. We think of Greta, we think of John, we think of, of Catherine, who's recovering from a stroke, and we think of others, Jacob, and the list goes on and on. We pause now for a moment of silent confession and personal prayer. join me in the unison prayer of confession. We confess our day-to-day -day failures to be truly human. Lord, we confess you. Lord, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our hearts, minds, and souls. Lord, we confess you. Lord, we have failed to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, we confess you. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive all our sins, true O oh, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
word about the offering. God has given us many gifts. We see God all around us. The work of the church continues. For those of you worshiping in person, we have offering plates at the door to ensure no contact giving. For those of you worshiping online, please send your check to Autotail United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 124, Autotail, Minnesota 56571. Or visit our website or Facebook page to use the PayPal giving there. Let us join together in singing our hymn in preparation for com communion, just as I am.
Thank you. 
of benediction followed by our hymn of dismissal, which will be blessed be the tide that binds. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.